All right, this morning we're gonna change the rotors and pads on a 2019 BMW X3 M40i. And my buddy Kevin came over today, brought his car, and uh, we're gonna be doing it and showing you how. So we had a uh, weird situation where we tried to use my quick jacks on here, but the mounting points are way at the front here and way in the back here, and it was longer than my quick jack. So I've read that some people have been able to do this, but if so, please comment below and let me know how that happened because uh, I can't figure it out. So since we can't get the quick jack working, we're going to do one wheel at a time. And uh, to start with the car on the ground, we're going to loosen the lug bolts with a extension like this and a 17 millimeter. All right, everybody, this is Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hey. <laughs> All right, he's just going to loosen these in a star pattern just to uh, break them so that when it's jacked up, you're not swaying the car and knocking it off the jack stands. All right, an important step is just to make sure that your parking brake is not on. So if it's on, go ahead and turn it off. Disengage it. Okay, Sans quick jack. We went ahead and jacked up at this point in the middle. And all you need to do is get it high enough so that your tire isn't touching so you can get the wheel off. And then just used two jack stands on the normal jacking points. All right, now just remove all five plug nuts and we can. All right, so we're gonna be replacing the rotors on this as we've seen in the, the video so far. We're gonna be replacing them with R1 Concepts Optimum Geomat rotors and pads. Um, so they're nice upgraded uh, rotors and carbon, carbon coated pads. And same with the um, rotors here. They have Optimum Geomat carbon overlay on them. So that should help with um, reducing brake temperatures and overall stopping power. And then we just have the uh, BMW OEM sensors that we're gonna replace since they've been triggered on the other ones and it's uh, time for that. And we'll use a little bit of the uh, brake grease later on. All right, in this car, the uh, brake fluid reservoir is located here under this little panel. You just twist this little unlock knob and it lifts right off. So you want to make sure while we're doing this, you're going to be uh, compressing the pistons. So you do not want this to overflow. So if you open this before we start and after each side, just keep an eye on this, make sure it doesn't overflow. And halfway done, if you want, you can pump the brakes to push some fluid back into the pistons after you've replaced, say, the rears. And it'll give you a little more room in there. Okay, so we're going to start with the... Um, sensor here, the wear sensor, and uh, since we're gonna replace it, it doesn't really matter how much we rip it apart. Um, but it is mounted on three different uh, clips that we're gonna pull out, so that's the first one. So just go ahead, and that's number two back there, and then three, if you follow it, it's all the way in the back. So uh, it's just the little U-shape metal bracket that you pull the, there's a little rubber grommet built along the, um, the line itself. Just pull up. It's probably tight and lots of uh, grime as you've been driving holding it in. So just pull them off. Don't worry about using force, you're messing them up. If you're replacing them, you can be more gentle if you're going to reuse them. Okay. Alright, once you get those out, there's a little black junction box here that we're going to open. There's two clips on the right hand side of it. If you want to use a little screwdriver to carefully pry them open, don't rip the tabs. And then inside, the wrong one here. There we go. And then on the inside of this box, um, you can uh, remove the connection. It's just in there kind of loosely. And there is usually a little area to push on it or that little uh, cover lifts up maybe. And just separate those. And uh, for our new one, we're gonna just plug it back in and put it back in the same, but we'll finish the job first and that'll be the last thing we put back in. 
All right, so next we're gonna remove the inner part of the caliper here. Uh, and this one has two bolts in the back that are 13 millimeter. Okay, now we're gonna remove this bolt back here. Um, but it has, uh, if you just start turning it, it's just gonna spin this piece right here. So you kind of need a little bit of a thinner wrench to get in there or else if it's too wide, it's gonna get stuck on there. So it's 17 millimeter. So you can just pull one side and loosen the other here. There it is, just a short little bolt. And then just do the one on the bottom. Let me start. All right, just hold on to center part as it should be loose now and wiggle it off now the back is still connected to all the brake lines so don't just uh, let it hang there yeah, so you don't damage them because the next step is on the back side of this we're going to um, disconnect this big cable coming out of here so that we can get access to remove the cover for the parking brake actuator. So now you can see the um, brake sensor is actually connected to the rear pad, so that's gonna come out here in a minute. <laughs> oh, there we go. There it is, so it's a push down and pull out. All right, so this cable we just disconnected is attached to the mounting bracket, so just like the brake sensor, it just pops out of here. So we'll remove that so that we can get to the bolt underneath it. So there's a hex right there and a hex on this side that need to be removed so we can get this whole bracket assembly off. All right, we had to get kind of a low clearance five millimeter hex to get this thing out because that bracket can kind of be in the way. <laughs> there we go. Okay, once you get that off, one more on this side. There we go, they're really stubborn. Alright, now this bracket should come off with all these other connected to it okay and we can finally get to you got it yeah we can finally get to this cover so the next step is we're going to remove the cover so I think we can uh, twist it back and forth and this cover will just come off maybe we'll see okay now that we have the cover off this is what you're going to have to turn to uh, release the parking brake mechanism. All right, we're going to take a T45 and turn this thing clockwise all the way until it stops, which you'll have to turn it for quite a while. Okay. All right. And so the next step is to just uh, pry our pads off so we should be able to just pull them pretty easily and get them out. You can see there's a little bit of material left, but uh, not a whole lot. And then just pull the one on the other side off. And we can see our parking sensor, how it's just attached in the groove of the pad there. So you can see that the old pad has uh, much less uh, material than the new one here that we're replacing it with. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is compress the piston. 
So I'm just using a C-clamp and, sorry, it's really hard to see here, but uh, the C-clamp is going on the inside and then we're just pressing on the back of this. Once it gets all the way in, you just stop and take the C-clamp back off and we're gonna put the cover back on. So we gotta align our cover back on and then we're gonna get the bracket, put the bracket back on. And put the bolts back in for this. All right, just make sure we have all these clipped back into our bracket and make sure you get this plug in nice and tight. I've heard of people online that didn't have it in all the way and got a parking brake warning after they got everything back together. All right, this is my go-to caliper holding trick. Just string some zip ties together to make them long enough. Loop them under your caliper and just uh, zip tie it to a control arm or something up here to keep it out of the way. So as soon as you're ready for it, just cut the zip ties off and you're good to go. This keeps all of the pressure off of the brake lines so you don't uh, damage them. All right, so our next step is to get the rest of the caliper off. And to get that off, we're using some E-Torx. Uh, EP16 is the size of this. This is what they look like. and. Let me show you in here. You can see uh, one right here and the other one down there. So there's just two of these to remove and this piece will come off. Oh shit. Yeah, these are, should be torqued down there pretty well. Because you don't want your calipers falling apart, falling off while you're driving. All right, as a tip, use a longer socket wrench to get the leverage you need on these things. They are on tight. All right, and then one more on the bottom. Cool. Now, just hold on to that bracket so it doesn't fall off when you remove these things. Really? All right, these are what they look like when they come out. There is a big washer on there. All right, once the last one comes off, this just comes out. And good time to use a little bit of brake cleaner and clean that thing off. All right, if you can see, past all this dust, there are these metal uh, brackets that are what hold the pad in. So we're gonna take those off and clean them as well and apply some grease so it does not squeal, hopefully, when we put the new pads back on. There's one on each side. All right, another thing to take note while you have these off is just inspect the rubber boots on these. Make sure they're not cracked or worn. Make sure that this moves in and out smoothly. If not, you can pull them out and add a little bit of grease to them to make sure that they have a nice smooth operation. All right, next we're gonna take the little uh, retaining clips off. They just pry off of here. So you just go around gently, because it is kind of thin metal. They'll just pop off. Just it. There we go. So this is what it looks like. We're gonna clean this thing off with some brake cleaner to get it clean. We're gonna clean underneath it. And then we're gonna apply a little grease. And we picked up some uh, brake and caliper grease. All right, 
just a little bit of the slime. You don't have to go crazy. And then you can just kind of spread it on evenly. Yeah, just use your finger, work it in there. back in, press it in, and then the same thing on top of all right and then you're gonna apply some on top of the bracket where the pad is gonna be making contact with the bracket. If any grease has gotten onto the painted part just go ahead and wipe that off okay now we're going to take the rotor off and to get it off it's only held on by one bolt which is a six millimeter hex so uh, it's going to rotate around a little bit and yeah make sure you get the head all the way in there so you don't strip that and then take it out So all that's holding it on now is the friction of this, but you can see it's nice and dirty. So I might have to, uh, if it doesn't just come off, we'll get a little rubber mallet and give it a, a couple little wax. So if you want to hit it around the face of this here, but you won't damage anything important and it'll come right off. So next we're gonna go ahead and take some more brake cleaner and a little wire brush and uh, clean this up. Go ahead. All right, now around the hub, we're just gonna put a little bit of antices and then you can just uh, wipe that all around there. So the next time you take this off, it won't be all corroded on there. All right, so new rotor, pop it on there, line up your holes. All right, get your retaining screw, tighten that back. Doesn't need a ton of pressure, just get it snug. There we go. All right, with this off, it's a little easier to work with. We'll go ahead and put our new sensor and pads in. So they're probably the same. Line them both up and press them in. There we go. Okay. All right, and then the other side. assembly time just a little tricky to line up your hole for the bolt so the top one started bolt number two just get them started by hand it's kind of tricky to line the holes up sometimes Now, most times I know like on my Porsche Boxster, these bolts that hold these on are aluminum and are supposed to be one use bolts because they stretch a little. So uh, it's common to actually replace them with new bolts, but most people just reuse the old ones anyway.
All right, now we can get a torque wrench back here and get them to the spec. right spec for your vehicle. All right, 110 newton meters is what it was. So we're gonna uh, use the torque wrench and get that cranked down. All right, now we're ready to put the middle piece back on so we can get support of it. Where's mm -hmm. our zip tie? Okay, so you can just <laughs> I can reach it. Let's clip that zip tie anywhere. And we got a twist. There we go. And make sure we wrap our cable back through the middle. This assembly back on and put our two bolts back in. Okay, it started. Get that one started. back up. Okay. So the torque spec for these guide bolts is 55 newton meters, so a lot less than the other one. So we'll torque these down to the right spec now. You need me to hold that? Yeah, I can hold that. All right, last step is to route that new sensor and clip it into the three places along the way. Plug it into the box. Connect our sensor back up. Okay. Snap it in, clip it back in the box. There we go. Snap it shut and we're done. Now I did hear that uh, for the um, parking sensor after you drive for three miles, it auto recalibrates itself and starts working again. So there's that. All right, time for the fronts. All we've done is taken the wheel off. So we can take a look at this caliper. It is in two pieces. You can see the crease here. And these bolts, two on the top and two on the bottom are what holds the caliper together. So we're not gonna take those apart. But back here is one bolt here and then a second one down here that we are gonna remove. So just two bolts are holding this whole assembly on. And the only thing attached to it is this one brake line coming in. So we just have to, uh, before we remove this, we'll take it off of this mounting bracket to give us a little more flexibility once that comes off so we don't damage that. Okay, so this brake line is an interesting grommet. It's got this kind of back piece to it that acts like a rubber band over the lip of this. Yeah. 
see what that is. Yeah. Just a little punch to get it started. Yeah, and since the tip of that starts getting wide, before you can get the pin all the way out, then I switch over to the little Allen key. So you can see, once you start knocking it out, it's gonna come out here, and then you're gonna be able to pull it out from the back. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, this one actually has a, uh, interesting. So this pin actually has a little thing on the back of it. Uh, interesting, we'll see what that is when we get that out. <laughs> Watch the fingers. spring is holding pressure on it so it won't be easy to pull out probably until it gets most of the way through there it goes Okay, so those pins should be holding the spring in, I guess. So, yeah. I'll just record while you mess around with it. Let's see if we can get that to come out. Press pistons again, and oh, look at that! How easy it comes out! <laughs> wow, that was a 45-minute process on the other side. So, once you learn how to do it, it's not that hard. So, hopefully, this video will help you. And if it does, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. That's my advertising. Okay, so this side, of course, has the uh, sensor. So. You just have to make sure you replace that. It's very simple, similar to the rear. Oh, it's Try to make things easier for us, Andrew. That makes too much sense. Maybe we can just take the pads off from the inside. All right, after that last one is off, this caliper will be held on by the pads and the pads are probably stuck on this lip there has been one that has been worn in so we might have to uh, compress the piston some in order to get this off use some channel locks putting a little electrical tape around the edges so it doesn't mar up your thing and then squeeze the pad oh, and ta-da it comes off all right, we're gonna compress the pistons using our C-clamp and a towel to prevent it from getting marred up on the outside. And just nice and easy and slowly, we will compress this until the pad comes to a stop. all the way in. See the pads all the way up against it and there's a gap on this side so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Yep. 
All right, so we got that spring out. I'll have to show you on the other side because that was a very unconventional way that we got that. So hopefully we can uh, demo it when we get to the other side. Prior pads off. Nice and glued on there. <laughs> and ta da! It's on there. Right. Pads are out. Okay, with the caliper out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and move this rotor. It just has this one bolt holding it in, and then the corrosion around the hub holding it in. So just like the rears, we're gonna whack it with a mallet and loosen it up. Off she goes. So we're gonna get some brake cleaner and some uh, steel brush again and clean up the hub and put a little anti-seize on it. Now let's Good. Sometimes you put a little anti-seize on that screw too. Caliper back on. We'll line it up. I can't get it from this angle. Need bolt number two. Okay, here's our new pads with our spring already stuck in the middle of them. So we're gonna see if we can cheat and just drop it all in together. Mm -mm. No, without the rotor there, it fits in. Can you see anything here? It's caught, not getting caught on. Is it hitting the piston? Yeah, it's hitting the piston. It's probably just have to wiggle it back and forth to push the piston in somewhere. Push this other piston. Try it. So let's keep going. Should have to leave now. Here it goes. Here it goes. All right, so there, all the way compressed. We can get it back in. All right, so what we can do is we can put the old um, pad back in because it's thinner, and then we can re-clamp it again with the channel locks to push those pistons all the way back out. Alright, for the 
fun part to get our spring back in. Do what the other guy did and put one of the pins back in first. Okay. And then you can stick that under the lip of the pin. So we're gonna take one pin. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna uh, clean that pin. With yeah. Some brake and put fluid some and lube on it. On the little anti seize on the thing so it'll slide easily. Cover this whole thing. All right, so we're gonna stick this bracket in place. And we have our first pin ready. It should slide through the little catch area of the bracket. Yep, so that's the pin through there. Beautiful. Can you see if we're catching somewhere? Is it, what about the other rotors? Is the other rotor too? cleaned and lubed. Maybe we're gonna have to push that spring down. Push yeah. it through. Apply a little pressure. And yeah, that's all it takes. Now that we figured this out. Right, make sure your pads, your, uh, the pins are all the way seated. Just a little spring washer that wasn't oh, popping man. in there. You got that yeah. popping. All right, got to put our little clip back on there, and that's all it takes for the front. Put your wheel back on. Don't forget to torque your lug nuts back on. Okay, after you change them, you're going to want to reset the uh, service indicators here, telling you that you need new pads when you have just replaced them. Okay, so what you're going to do is press the start stop button three times in a row and then you're gonna get this so service overdue hold in your trip button until it says diagnostic mode active then you can let go of it and uh, so it tells you that you need brake pads each time you press it it will cycle through all of the different service indicators so go to your rear brake pads and hold it in and then let go when it asks you if you want to reset and hold it in again to confirm that you want to reset it and then it says reset in progress and it is good and you'll see that now that one went away and only the front brake pad is there so on the oops if it goes away again Hold that in until it comes back and you're going to hold it in for your front brake pads let go reset yes hold it in and it will reset that reset was successful and now there are no service indicators so that's it
And of course, you want to bed in the brake. And enjoy. <laughs>